Yeah. <laughs> uh, something smooth yet sinister. Coming through to diminish you. And this here's the finisher. <laughs> Check it out. Uh. What is going on, guys? It's your boy Trey coming back at your screen by means of the World Wide Web. And today, for you guys, what I'm going to get into is a quick run of the new FG mission recalling order. All right. So. Um, this is actually a current guild event, so not only are you going to want to do this in order to get all the prizes, but if you are a part of a guild, which I really hope you are if you're an active player of the game, um, you are definitely going to want to run this to try to get the highest score possible, guys, alright? So, what I'm going to do in this video is just show you a quick run through of it, okay? And uh, show you how to at least get through it to get the top prizes, alright? Um, this run... Is by no means a uh, super top score video. Let me just put that to you guys up front. All right. Uh, main reason being because as of the recording of this video, this guild event is currently active right now. All right. And uh, nothing against you guys, but I'm not really trying to help no one get a leg up on me. <laughs> me and my guild right now. Granted, um, me and my guild ain't going for that number one spot. Uh, we are not pingus by any means, but. Uh, we are fairly active and uh, we are fairly experienced with the game, so uh, we will usually easily place around like top 50, top 30 guild, something like that. But anyways, um, as far as the strategy goes, guys, um, this this FG is broken up into two segments. It's a total of 10 battles, but uh, you do five battles, then you get a little rest uh, break. And then you do the last five battles. Uh, just like other FG missions, you got a little perk, or if if the, uh, that name will work for you, that you can bring along with you um, in order to help enhance you a little bit. So on the first five, the one I recommend is just to boost the BB gauge, all right? Just so you can mow through these first five. They're fairly easy, guys, all right, honestly. Uh, bring the boost the BB gauge and just auto battle everything as BB at all. Excuse me, blow it right out of the water, nothing to it, all right? Now, um, you get into the second five, things do get a little more complicated, alright, it's not that more, much more complicated, but um, you can still easily get it done, alright. This this isn't a difficult uh, FG mission by any means, alright, it's actually fairly easy. Um, the hard thing is just getting a really high score, okay, and I'll talk a little bit more about score later in the video. Um, as of right now, let me just ex explain the units and why I'm bringing them. First off, we got the Zek lead, alright? The uh, reason we picked Zek lead is actually more for defensive purposes than anything. Uh, every unit, uh, or every enemy, I should say, besides the first one being the Juggernaut, is either of the light or dark element. Um, some bosses can change the element, but uh, for the most part, you, you're battling light and dark enemies in this FG, alright? Zek, uh, his leader skill mitigates light and dark damage by, I believe, it's 15% on his leader skill. And then with his uh, SBB, he can do like another 10 to 15 percent. I can't remember exactly, but we bring him for defensive purposes because when you get down to the uh, end bosses, mainly the last one, uh, they do have some attacks that hit pretty hard. Okay, so you want to try to mitigate that junk as much as possible. All right. Um, secondly, uh, we're going to talk about Sirius. All right, main reason we bring Sirius attack defense recovery boost, of course. Um, also like that he give us that BB gauge on spark to help keep our BB gauge up. Alright, and also his UBB will come in a little bit handy against the final boss. Alright, main reason we brought we brought Art. Um, Art has the highest attack boost out of all the units I'm using. And also uh, my Art has the uh, paint with elements, so it definitely helps to ensure that we're getting that elements of damage in there, which results in more damage overall being dealt. All right, next on the line or next on the list, we got Elza. All right, I brought Elza as my friend. Um, it's actually my own Elza. Um, the reason I like Elza is because uh, she not only gives you a boost to your attack and spark damage, but also because of the BB gauge fill rate. Right, you are fighting single enemies this entire FG, which means that your BC production isn't going to be the greatest. So, um, using a leader skill like hers ensures pretty much or fairly closely that you always have full SBB gauges at the end of every turn. Alright. Um, also her SBB, she's a nice spark blanket. She deals some status ailments, stuff like that, so she helps in that way. Alright, then we got Zero. 
Um, I brought Zero because he has a little bit higher spark damage boost than Elza. Okay. Also, he is able to cast a spark and vulnerability and spark critical, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, that's more damage on spark. All right. And then last but not least, we brought Stein, Steen, however you say his name. Um, he is our mid again, right? And this battle that you are watching now is the main reason I brought him. Um, Zevil Y, when you attack her, she can counteract you with status ailments. So every time you attack her, you have a chance of getting hit with status ailments. But my Stein has the uh, remove status ailments and negate status ailments on BB and SBB. So that's one aspect of this jump. I don't have to worry about it, right? So it just makes it much easier to auto battle, basically. Okay, and uh, that's pretty much it for the unit explanation. Uh, as of right now, um, if you've been paying attention, you see I'm just blowing through it with auto battle. There's literally no strategy to follow. Just coming here with a full squad of armies and just blow this crap out of the water, guys. All right, nothing really to it at all. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and knock Zebra Wall off this turn and move on to the first battle that you may somewhat have to pay attention to depending on your squad composition. If you got a wrecked squad, um, you'll blow Aphrodite right out of the water, right? If you don't have a wrecked squad, there is something you will need to watch out for or he will make mince meat out of a couple of your units with some very powerful single target attacks, all right? If uh, any of you guys remember Aphrodite, he has an attack called Void Casualty that can just make a single unit melt like butter. He will destroy them like nothing. Your nice powerful army unit look like garbage now, okay? So, when you need to watch out for it, well, when you get Aphrodite down in fairly low health, I wanna say it's about below 20%, he's going to heal himself, okay? For a good amount. Um, one thing you wanna make sure you do is the turn after he heals, you wanna make sure that is the last turn he is alive, all right? If you brought the item set for the second half, do like I did, use UBB to ensure that you go ahead and wreck that guy and remove him from your face, okay? And uh, you won't have to worry about that void casualty, and you won't have to worry about reviving units, okay? Now, the final boss battle of this is Lucius, alright? Um, when you battle against Lucius in the first round, honestly, nothing really to watch out for, especially if you're running Zek the lead, alright? Um, Lucius hits like a little baby, alright? So uh, just go ahead and blow Lucius out of the water. Um, when you get Lucius down to 0% HP, um, Lucius actually transforms into, I believe his name is Amorphous Lucius, something like that. His little pug looking form. All right. Now in this form, if you don't have like a Wreck-It Ralph type squad, um, you may have to also be careful of what you're doing. Okay. So, um... When you get Lucius down to, I believe it's below 20% HP in its second form, alright, um, when you get him below 20%, he is going to heal himself, or it is going to heal itself, I don't think Lucius has a gender, I'm pretty sure it's a genderless unit, it will heal itself, alright, after it heals itself, um, and you get him down to low HP again, I believe that's right, gonna heal himself you get him down to low HP again it's gonna say something along the lines of uh, the gate is opening I hear something opening something along those lines all right after that um, you're probably going to want to use a UBB such as Sirius with 75% mitigation okay um, main reason being it's a fairly powerful attack all right keep in mind that is the only chance you can use your UBB against Lucius whatsoever if you use it on any other turn he will use an attack called Galaxy that will wipe you right the heck out. It will wipe any crew, right? No matter what you twerking with, <laughs> it's done, okay? And uh, after that UBB, guys, just go ahead and keep up the SBB Assault, you'll trash them, okay? Um, another thing you may want to be careful about, as soon as you start this battle, um, Lucius is going to hit you with Brave Ending, which is going to uh, lock your leader skills, okay? So uh, be careful of that. It's also going to buff wipe. It buffs wipes and locks your leader skill. Um, he's going to use it again at 50% HP. So uh, it, and that's that leader skill lock stays in effect for three turns. So buff wipe on that turn as soon as he transforms. Leader skill lock for three turns. Get him down to 50%. Going to use it again. Buff wipe leader skill lock for the following three turns. Okay. So as you see here in the video, 
He just said the message. Now I'm going to go ahead and UBB my serious. This is the only time you can UBB once again. UBB my serious. You see you're not dealing any real damage because of his damage mitigation. He's going to hit you with gate. All right. Honestly, uh, with Zek lead, guys, you don't even have to do that. All right. Uh, with the attack was just wimpy at best, um, even without 75% mitigation. But if you want to play it safe, go ahead and use the UBB. And then from there, just go ahead and uh, wipe Amorphous Lucius out. And you are pretty much done, all right? The way the rewards work in this particular FG, um, there is no specific score to be attained. You just have to win, right? As long as you defeat all the bosses, you will receive all of the rewards, right? The score is for guild event purposes, all right? Now, I will admit, the score I got in this video is not that impressive, right? That's not that impressive. I have already saw upwards of 7 to 8 million in that uh, FG. So, uh, you can do better. Uh, hopefully, you'll try to do better, right? But other than that, I'm just going to show you my units and everything like that. And then, uh, that's pretty much going to wrap the video up, guys. Okay, so uh, if you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more Brave Frontier content. And if you wish to join the Facebook group, the link is down below in the description, guys. All right. Uh, other than that, like I said, going to show you my units, my spheres, my enhancements, everything like that. And I uh, hope you guys have a good run at it yourselves, okay? Now I'm going to set my face up, let you enjoy the rest of the video. Peace out, guys.